Hello students, today I will discuss something about the skull. You know the skull having two main parts, one is the vault of the skull, one is base of the skull. Here I am showing you the vault and the base, particularly in the base, I will show you the interior of the base of the skull, the anatomical structures, the important foramens, important fissures, important landmarks and the subdivisions of the interior of the base of the skull. Let us first see the vault of the skull. This is the skull as a whole and on the upper part, this is the vault. If I take out the vault, we can see the interior of the base of the skull. Before discussing the base, let us know few words on the vault of the skull. It is the outer surface of the vault and in the outer surface anteriorly this is the frontal bone and on two sides the parietal bones and posteriorly small part is the squamous part of the occipital bone and also we can see sutures this is the coronal suture between the frontal and two parietal bone and this is the sagittal suture between two parietal bones and in the interior of the vault here also we can see the corresponding sagittal suture and also the coronal suture. So this bone is the frontal and these two are the two parietal bones. And this skull having one outer table and one inner table and in between these two this one is the diploic bone or cancellous bone of these two plate inner and outer the inner plate is thinner than the outer plate and some veins are also there in the diploic tissue called the diploic veins. Then let us discuss the main part of discussion that is the interior of the base of the skull. This is the interior and you know here you will find the different parts of the brain and its meninges, blood vessels and cerebrospinal fluid and the capacity of the cranial box is about 1400 to 1500 ml. If we see this interior of the base is divided into three main parts from anterior to posterior this part is the anterior cranial fossa then middle part is called the middle cranial fossa and the posterior part is called the posterior cranial fossa. We will discuss separately the structures and some anatomical features of the anterior cranial fossa, then middle cranial fossa, then posterior cranial fossa. Let us discuss first the anterior cranial fossa, this one. First of all, we have to know what are the bones from this anterior cranial fossa. Here three bones from the interior or floor of the anterior cranial fossa. What are these three bones? This bone is a frontal bone. You know the, this is frontal bone and the frontal bone having the squamous part here and this part is the orbital plate because the under surface of the orbital plate forms the roof of the orbit. Here you can see this is orbit. So this is the roof of the orbit and on this side this is the orbital plate on both sides it forms a part of the anterior cranial fossa. So the orbital plate or superior surface of the orbital plate of frontal bone. In this bone, this one. And in the middle, this gap, it is breached by ethmoid bone. This is ethmoid. So the ethmoid bone, it is fitted in the gap in this notch between the two orbital plate in this way. Here you can see ethmoid. The middle part, this part is called the cabiform plate of ethmoid bone and this is crystal alloy of ethmoid bone. And third bone to form the anterocranial fossa is the sphenoid. This is sphenoid and here this is the body of the sphenoid, this is the lesser wing of sphenoid. So this lesser wing of both sides and in the middle the jugum sphenoidally of the sphenoid forms the part of the anterocranial fossa. 
So here this is lesserings of sphenoid of this side and this side and is continuous in the midline as jugam sphenoid alley of the sphenoid. So now we know the bones forming the floor of the anterocranial fossa is the orbital plate of frontal bone of both sides, then ethmoid, particularly the irbibum plate of ethmoid bone, this one, and the cristagalaya of ethmoid bone, and posteriorly the lesser ring of sphenoid. That means this one, this is the sphenoid, so this is the lesser ring of sphenoid bone of both sides and the jugam sphenoid alley. So here, lesser ring of sphenoid and jugam sphenoid alley. Now, we will see what are the structures on the orbital plate. On the orbital plate, you can see there are so many depressions and elevations are there. Here, you will find the undersurface of the frontal lobe of the cerebrum and also the arachnoid granulations which causes the depressions. And in the middle, that means in between the two orbital plate, there is KB from plate of the ethmoid bone, this one. This KB from plate means on the surface you will see so many minor or small openings, about 15 to 20 openings on each side of the KB from plate of ethmoid bone are there. And these small openings due to the passage of olfactory nerve which starts from the nasal mucous membrane here and it passes through the cuneiform plate of ethmoid bone and here and then the nerves ends in the olfactory bulb here on each side of the midline here olfactory bulb then olfactory tract will pass backwards and in the midline this is the elevation or projection called the crystal galli and here there is a bifurcation or ala this crystal ally will articulate with the frontal bone. This is frontal bone and on the inner side you will see this one crest is there. Can you see this crest called frontal crest and this frontal crest above it is dividing and forming a sulcus which lowers the superior sagittal sinus and the margin of the sinus and the frontal crest. Here you will get the attachment of falx cerebri. So when you will articulate this crystal of ethmoid bone and the internal frontal crest, in between these two there is a small depression. This depression sometimes it bears a foramen called foramen cecum, this one. Can you see this foramen? Yes, this is foramen cecum. Usually, no structure passes through the foramen cecum because it is a blind foramen. But sometimes, in an emissary vein passes from the veins of the nose through the emissary vein into the superior sagittal sinus, which starts here from the frontal crest and going upwards. Then, in the sagittal sulcus on the interior of the parietal bone, here you will see here. And ultimately, it ends in the occipital bone and then right transverse sinus. That means the superficial sinus starts from the internal crest, frontal crest, in front of the foramen cecum. Then it passes posteriorly on each side of the sagittal suture of the vault of the skull or the interior of the vault of the skull on the sagittal sulcus. Then in the occipital bone downwards up to the internal protuberance then deviating to the right side as the right transverse sinus. Then what are the other structures we can see in the anterior cranial fossa. In the anterior cranial fossa again you see posteriorly this one in the midline is called jugam sphenoid alley. It is a flat surface and if you see laterally this is called lesser ring of sphenoid. In the separately in the sphenoid bone, here this is the sphenoid bone, this is lesser ring of sphenoid. This lesser ring of sphenoid having one anterior border 
and one posterior border. The anterior border, it articulates with the orbital plate of the frontal bone like this, like this. Can you see the articulation between the frontal and the sphenoid? So here is the articulation between the anterior border of the lesseringus sphenoid and the posterior border or the orbital plate of the frontal bone here. And this gap, my finger is here, here it is filled by the ethmoidal bone, ethmoid here. So ethmoid and orbital plate on both sides and the sphenoid, these three bones from the anterior cranial fossa. And if you see the posterior border of the lesser wing of sphenoid, it is free. This posterior border, it forms the posterior boundary of the anterior cranial fossa. If you see the boundary of anterior cranial fossa here, we can see it is bounded posteriorly by the posterior border of the lesseringa sphenoid and which ends medially as a process called anterior clinoid process. Then this anterior clinoid process of this side and then is running this way on the posterior border of the jugum sphenoidally, then coming to the posterior posteriorly as the anterior clinoid process of this side then posterior border of the lesser ring of sphenoid. So, this is the boundary of the anterior cranial fossa. And here, in the lesser ring of sphenoid, medially, this medial end of this posterior border are called anterior cranial process, which is attached with a bar of bone with the body of the sphenoid. And here also, the lesser ring, it also articulates or it also joins with the body of the sphenoid, forming a gap, this one, forming a canal. My probe is in the canal. Can you see the canal? And this canal you can see through the orbit. If I pass this one, this way, it is coming into the orbit. And this canal is called the optic canal. So, optic canal, it is formed by the two process, anterior root and posterior root and passes the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery which is a branch of internal cavity artery. And here one thing to be mentioned, if you are asked what is optic strut, the optic strut means this is the optic strut. The smaller and thicker posterior root, this one is called the optic strut. The anterior root is thinner and it is continuous with the jugam sphenoidally, but the posterior root here, it extends from the anterior clinoid process up to the body, it is thick and stout, it is called the optic strut and it forms the roof of the optic canal. Now we can see there, here, that the anterior cranial fossa of the all three cranial fossa is at the highest level and the posterior cranial fossa is at the lowest level.